Hi everyone, this is Grace with hashtag Make Bullhead Better. And today I'm here with Erin Taylor, who is the community, what is it? Outreach coordinator. Community outreach coordinator for First Things First. Um, she was on Larry Toon Force's show last week and um, he told her about Make Bullhead Better. And so she reached out to me. I'm super excited to interview her in person and to have her tell us about all of the things that their organization does to help um, families in our area. So last time with the audio there was um, a little low audio so if you are watching can you just give me a thumbs up that the audio is good that would be great. All right let's get started. Hi Erin. Hi. Thank you so much for letting me interview you for Make Bullhead Better. Thank you for the opportunity. <laughs> okay let's talk a little bit about First Things First. Um, what is it and can you just give us a small overview. Sure, so First Things First is a statewide organization through the state of Arizona that supports families with young children zero to five. The whole idea is to get them healthy and ready to go so when they start kindergarten they're starting on a strong foundation. The really great thing about First Things First um, is the local decision aspect. So although we're a statewide organization, the state is broken up into 28 different regions because what works for kids in Phoenix isn't going to work for kids in more rural regions like ours. And so each region has a regional partnership council that helps to make decisions about what to fund in the region. And so all of the programs that we do fund are local here to the La Paz Mojave region. Um, there's about 14,000 children between the ages of birth to six um, here in the La Paz Mojave region, which as it sounds covers all of La Paz and Mojave counties. So we cover as far north as Colorado City area um, and as far south as Salome, Ehrenberg, Wendon area. Okay, and I see on here you have this uh, scale of where the money is spent. And so would you say, um, you know, what has been the greatest success that you've seen in, in the areas that you are spending money? Sure, so all of our programs are basically run three areas of health, early learning, and family support. And again, it's all to support those ch young children to make sure that they're um, developing healthy, um, that they're getting the information parents need, that the parents are getting the information that they need to support their, their children in those first five years. So um, we have fund programs in the area of Quality First, which is one of our signature programs through First Things First, um, which provides uh, funding to preschools and child care centers, along with coaching for the staff and incentives for the center to improve the quality of experiences at those centers. We also fund home visitation programs, um, an Arizona PBS at home learning program, um, a court team through the Mojave Superior Court that works with foster children, um, and a couple of other programs, again, that all serve young children zero to five. Okay, can you have a couple of things right here. Can you talk about how you, you know, all of those, all of those things sound incredible, but sometimes it's hard to like just put the pieces together and be like, oh, I need that or I need this. So you, you have some things here that I think will help people. And can you talk about how they can get these items and then what you have here in your packet? Sure, so all of these items we have out of our office, our regional office is out of Lake Cavasu City, but we cover, again, the entire region of La Paz Mojave. So we're in all of these different communities because we really want to make sure that, that we're reaching all of the families and supporters of early education as well. We really try to work to raise awareness around the importance of those first five years. And the root of what we do is really um, in brain development. We know that 90% of the brain develops before the age of five, that those critical structures needed to make those additional connections later in life, all of that is happening in those first five years and really setting the foundation um, for outcomes later in life. So we really try to work with parents, provide them information that will support those first five years. So we have um, a resource guide that has all of the programs here. Um, locally, some of them we fund as grantees, others we partner with. We try to, even if we don't fund programs, we really work hard to partner with organizations, um, even those outside of early childhood, K through 12, um, higher education, because we know that 
that they're all connected. Um, the better success that a child has early on, the better successes that they're going to have later in life, right? So the more that we can work together and partner with different community organizations like Make Bullhead Better, um, the whole community is strengthened through that. So we really try to partner with outside organizations as well, provide that support, and let parents know what's available because there really are a lot of great programs in this region, um, but families can't take advantage of what they don't know about. So we really try to work hard to get that information out. Exactly. Is there, I love this uh, resource guide. I think this is definitely needed in our area. Is there a way to access this information online on a website? So our programs, we have a website at firstthingsfirst.org. Um, and if you click on Find Your Region, you can bring up the La Paz Mojave region. We have all kinds of reports and publications. Um, I don't think this resource guide is available digitally just because um, contact information and things like that change frequently. Um, I know we had given some resource guides to the Chamber of Commerce a little while ago. They may be out of them, but we can definitely get those out here in the community because, again, we want them to be distributed so that mm -hmm. people know what's going on. Absolutely. So um, I, is it okay if I take some pictures of these things and post them so people Oh, absolutely, okay. absolutely, yeah. And then do you want to talk about um, this, the milestones and how you help parents, you know, know I have a two-month-old and a two-year-old, so I know that all those things are important to you. You just want to know, is everything on track? Are they doing okay? Um, so how is that helpful in this zero to five age range? Sure. Well, all children develop at different, different stages, different speeds, um, but this really helps to keep parents on track and know what to look for and how they can support their children through different milestones. So everything from rolling over, starting to crawl, those physical development, um, to talking, early literacy, developing those early literacy skills. Literacy is more than just learning how to read, right? It's talking to children. The more you talk to them, the more words they're going to hear and the more words, words they're going to learn. Mm -hmm. That's how they learn language is from what's going on around them. And so things like milestone moments, um, books that we distribute, it's all geared toward really improving that quality experience with young children, creating moments of engagement. Young children are learning everything that's going on around them, whether you want them to or not, they're picking up everything that's going on around them. And so we really try to impress upon parents, caregivers, and the community at large, right? Because even if you're not a parent of a young child, you probably know one, either a grandchild, a neighbor, um, so really just building the quality of those early experiences really has uh, a great out, um, impact on the outcomes later in life. Absolutely. Um, okay, so thank you so much for that information. Um, like she said, there's the website, which I linked their Facebook page to. I'm just going to turn around. Um, I linked their Facebook page okay. to. Also, we're going to be um, teaming up and trying to distribute some of these bags with all of these resources in them. Um, it's just a wonderful program. I'm so thankful to have met Erin and to, um, you know, there's, there's not a lot of resources, even just this resource guide is something that needs to be out there. I feel like if you lived here your whole life, you kind of know, you know where everything is and who to contact, but if you were a new family moving into our area, it's hard to know how to get connected and you know where everything is, who you can hang out with, when the library does things, when any where clothes for my kids, I can't afford it, I need diapers, like all of those different things. There are resources that are available in our town. So I'm so excited to team up with organizations like this and get that information out to people in Bullhead and young families. So I just wanted to tell a personal story real quick about that zero to five language. I used to live in Israel and the pastor of the church that I went to, he was American, his wife was Russian, and obviously we lived in Israel. And their little boy that was three years old knew all three languages perfectly and he knew who to speak them to, and he was fluent in three languages by three. So to think that your little child isn't absorbing what's going on around them isn't true. They're absorbing so much more than you think. So having a two-month-old and a two-year-old, I know that they can be little parrots, and so <laughs> we have to know, you know, they're picking up what we're throwing down. So I just wanna say thank you to everyone for participating, and we're gonna have some really fun events for families coming up 
And thank you so much, Erin, for being here. Would you like to say anything in closing? Um, sure, just the best thing that you can do if you do have a young child in your life, we just encourage you to talk, read, sing, and play with them. We know that this is a really stressful time right now, um, but children are resilient, and they also, like Grace was saying, they pick up what you're putting out. So um, if you can model that resiliency for them, it's going to make everything more better. But we don't want to put pressure on parents. We know that everything is really stressful right now. So it, it's not about um, you know doing a workbook or anything like that. We're just really asking them to just talk, read, sing, play with your children. Play is learning for them. So the more they play, the more they learn. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Erin. Thank you.